focus on your breath. Try to keep your mind balanced right here in the present moment. Don't lean to the future. Don't lean to the past. Don't lean toward things you like or things you dislike. Try to be very still and clear and alert right here in the present. This is an important skill that we have to learn how to develop, how to keep the mind under control. Because we live in a world where there's aging, illness, death, sorrow, lamentation, all kinds of things that, are, that we don't want in the world. And some of the things we can do something about them, and other things we just can't do anything at all. So we have to learn how to train the mind not to take these things on and create more suffering for itself. Because that's where the really heavy suffering in life is, what we take on, what we lay and claim to. This is mean, this is mine, and then it's going to change. And then when it changes, okay, we're, it's like something's been ripped out of our own minds. So we've got to realize that our awareness is one thing, these other things are something else. And we live together for a certain period of time, and we do the best we can for one another, but there comes a point where there's nothing you can do for some other people. And John Sawat used to say often that each of us has one person that we're really responsible for, and that's ourselves. As for other people, the people in our family, we look after them, we teach them as best we can advise them as best we can. But then finally their decisions are their decisions that you're run, we're not responsible for. So we have to learn how to develop as much equanimity as we can as we deal with the world, because otherwise things get we get knocked around. The Buddha's image of the world is eight winds blowing from eight different directions. It's up on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. You can, up there you realize how strong some of these winds can be. Well, that's nothing compared to the winds of our lives. Gain comes, loss comes. Status comes, status goes. Praise, criticism, pleasure, pain. These are big big winds that come blowing around. And if the mind isn't really solid, if it isn't really established as something separate, it's going to get blown around really badly. So we have to train the mind to have its own separate place inside and to know how to look at the world so we don't get all tied up in the affairs of the world. When think good things come, we learn how to make the best use out of them. When they go, we learn, okay, what's, what's the goodness that you can develop even when things go? There was a time when Sari Buddha passed away, and Ananda went to see the Buddha and complained how he felt like he'd lost his sense of directions up and, up and down, north and south, because he'd relied so much on Sari Buddha. And the Buddha said, when Sari Buddha died, did he take virtue with him? Did he take concentration? Did he take discernment? Did he take release? None of these things were taken with him. They're still there in the world. So we focus on that. Even when we, there's loss of other things that we may want, we realize the goodness, the opportunity to do goodness, that's still there. And we're going to make the most of that opportunity. Because that's the way we help ourselves, that's the way we help other people. And that's the best a human being can do. And that's the best anybody can do. Even the gods or the devas, they can't do better than that. Sometimes you hear claims about people being able to help other people. Well, you can help to a certain extent if you have the karma connection, but there comes a point where each person is his or her own master, his or her own decider. And so you want to make sure that you decide things well, that you change your life at any point where there's suffering that you're causing for yourself or other people, you try to change that. You're the decider here. So make sure you decide that at the very least you don't pile extra suffering on top of yourself. I mean, it's bad enough living in a world with aging, illness, and death, but you don't want to add any more on top of that. So you do your best to find something inside the mind that doesn't age, doesn't grow ill, doesn't die. That's the good news of the Buddha's teachings. So if we want to make the most of it, we have to find that inside ourselves. Then we can live in the world as the Buddha's comparison was as a big stone column buried eight cubits down into the ground, eight cubits above the ground. The winds can blow from any direction, but the column doesn't shake, because it's firmly grounded. So we try to train our minds to be firmly grounded as well. 